All right, ladies and gentlemen, money, money, money. Everybody likes to have it, and uh, some people like to talk about it. I know I do. Uh, Paul Sullivan uh, writes about it, author of The Thin Green Line, The Money Secrets of the Super Wealthy. There it is on your TV screen. And he's also a New York Times columnist for Wealth Matters. Good to see you, sir. Thanks very much. All right, so... Um, the money secrets of the super wealthy. First, let's let's talk about what you define in the book as the difference between rich and wealthy. Yeah, that's essential. I mean, rich is a number. Rich is a number on your brokerage statement. Rich is the value of your house if you, you zillow it. That fluctuates. We saw in the in 2008, 2009 that that number can quickly evaporate. Right. Wealthy, being wealthy, that is a sense of security. And when I thought of the, the, the thin green line, I thought of it as one of those classic stock charts over the past 50 years. Starts low, goes high. There's some dips here and there, but I envisioned it as people being all along that line. You could be up here uh, making an enormous income and making the right decisions and being wealthy and you're above the line, or you could be down here more modest. You could be a teacher making still those same great decisions within your means and you're wealthy. You have security. You, you know, life isn't happening to you. You have control over what you want to and do. And how many athletes have we seen, to get off the track for a second here, that make multi-million dollar contracts and they wind up broke. It's athletes, they get picked on a lot. It's lottery winners. Yeah, uh, lottery winners. Plenty yeah. of, you know, actors playing movies. You know, you're making 15, 20 million dollars uh, a film and, you know, poor <laughs> Nicolas Cage a couple years ago, yeah, he was went broke. broke. He went broke. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so, so how can the average person, um, you know, how can they aspire to become better than the average person, or should I say financially speaking, yeah. better, better off than the average person. Yeah. It's, it's about decisions and behaviors. And I have a lot of specific examples in the book, but you know, one of the things I tell people when it comes to saving their money, when it comes to investing their money, is ignore the daily close of the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ. It's irrelevant to your life. You should be thinking more about having a balanced portfolio. You should be thinking more about saving, and you should be thinking more about controlling the things that you can c control. What are those things? your expenses. I mean, debt comes into this. Debt is, you know, necessary in a lot of ways. You want to buy a house? Most people don't have a spare 100, 200, 500, whatever right, your house costs. You take costs. out a mortgage. You take out a mortgage. But you have to live within reason. You know, this isn't a book about deprivation. Right. This is a book about choice. And so the people who are the smartest about it, you know, know how to manage that debt, know how to buy a, you know, slightly smaller house. And if next year turns out to be better than this year, uh, and that happens for a couple of years, maybe they upgrade. Maybe they buy a bigger house. And it's not getting ahead of yourself. How many people uh, graduate into that upper echelon. So many people start out, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of people inherit their wealth and some in business, you know, get very successful. But how many through doing what you're talking about, financial restraint to a great degree, smart investments, you know, um, not living above your means, how, how many of, of those people translate into all of a sudden one day they're going to find themselves way up there? Yeah, not, not enough. Is, is the easy answer. And, and, and I look at it in terms of not so much way up there, because there are plenty of people way up there. I mean, I live out in Connecticut. There are plenty of hedge fund managers who would seem to have it all, but they're, they're hanging on with their fingertips to that thin green line. They're, they're dangling below it. I think it's more to, to, get on, to get on top is what I want people to be. I want them to get on top of their finances, get on top of their lives. And that's where that person making you know, fifty, dollars $100,000 a year can make the right choices to still have fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't a book about, you know, right. Don't have your Starbucks latte. You know, have whatever you like, right. but know that it comes at, 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 at a cost, and that's what I'm trying to tell people, so that you know they ultimately have choices in their and, life. And 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 when you're when you're a youngster or you're out of college, if you have a job, uh, if you don't, it's a different story. But if you have a job, that's the time to start, right? I mean, that's the time to invest and and save and and be wise about this. Look, compound interest works both ways. If you start saving early, you have a broadly diversified portfolio. Next thing you wake up 40 years down the road, you've got a good pot of money there. But if you take all that money and put it on your credit card and start spending way beyond your means, compound interest works that way too. Yeah. Pretty soon your 5,000 is 10,000 is 20,000 is 40,000 and you're making, you know, 40 grand a year. How are you ever going to pay off that $40,000 in credit card debt? You're, you're, you're not. No one ever looks at uh, every credit card statement says if you paid the minimum, how long it would take <laughs> to pay off that balance. And yeah. I guess we're talking about, you know, 20 years or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And what the interest becomes. Yeah, that's if you don't spend any more money yeah. either. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, uh, first of all, this book, if we could put the book up again real quick, one of the best book covers. It's elegant. 
And uh, yeah, look at that book. Don't you want to just buy that book just to put it on your, your mantle or your bookcase or your shelf? But read it. It's very important. Uh, thank you, Paul. Really Great. appreciate you thank coming you on. Much, yeah. Paul Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. Read him in the New York Times uh, 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 and the Wealth Matters uh, column as well. All right, folks, uh, we are coming back. Uh, we're going to have a lot more of the Steve Malsberg Show straight ahead. And you know where it is. It's only right here on Newsmax Television. So don't you go away.